This is Minimalish. I'm your host, Desiree, and before we get started, let me be clear. This podcast isn't just about minimalism. It's a podcast about living fully. Over the past few years, I've learned that living with a little less in our homes and on our calendars leads to less cluttering up our minds, which simply helps give us the space to give our time and thoughts to the things that actually matter. So what do we talk about on here? We talk about minimalism and decluttering and how to get there, yes. But we also have conversations about pursuing intentionality in the things that matter, like our motherhood, faith, relationships, work, and mindset. Minimalish is a podcast for the women committed to contentment and loving the life in front of them, committed to living with a little less so they can create space for the things that matter most. What it's not about, how many spoons you should have, or any kind of rules or legalistic minimalism that promises you'll be happier if you just get rid of more stuff. Getting rid of stuff isn't what will make you happy. It's about the life you live with the new space you find. If that sounds good to you, grab a mug of whatever you like and stick around. I'm so grateful you're here. Hey friend, welcome back to Minimalish. I have just taken the longest impromptu break from the podcast that I think I've ever taken. Usually it's been like a one week break, but some things have changed around here. (laughs) We moved, one, just this past weekend, and two, we, I just started a full-time job about two weeks ago. So a lot has changed, but I am excited to be back, probably not in the same capacity as before. I'm aiming for two episodes a month, but I am excited to be back, and I am super excited to be coming back with a bang with today's episode, which is a really fun conversation with Mike Quillen Smith, also known as The Nester. So if you haven't heard of her, you need to go look her up right now as you are listening, because she's just wonderful. And she wrote The Cozy Minimalist Home, And now she's coming out with a new book next week called Welcome Home. It's a cozy minimalist guide to decorating and hosting all year round. These are a couple of things that I always get asked about. Decorating as a minimalist, hosting as a minimalist, and even though I don't really consider myself fully a minimalist, I do hold minimalism or minimalish living as a value in my life. So these are things that I think about. These are iffy things because hosting requires you sometimes sort of to have more stuff. Decorating might feel like you should have more stuff to be able to decorate, but today's conversation is really going to clear all that up. It's a fun conversation and we dive a lot into decorating for the fall and just creating a cozy minimalist vibe in your home during the fall season, which could be replicated for every season. Let's dive right into my conversation with Mike Willen. All right, I'm so excited to have Mike Willen Smith on the podcast today. We are going to be talking all about cozy minimalist decorating and hosting and just having a cozy minimalist feel to your home kind of all year long. So before we get to that, first of all, thank you for being here. And can you kind of just tell everyone listening who you are and what you do. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Michael Lynn Smith. I go by the Nestor online because 13 years ago when I started out online, it just seemed weird to put a weird name like Michael Lynn out on the internet. I thought people would try to kill me and come <laughs> find me and rob me. Never happened. But also when you have a name that's hard to look at and pronounce, it just also seems a little weird to to put out there too. Um, but my goal is to help women create a home that they've always wanted so that they can use it the way they've always dreamed. So I feel like I see the world through home colored glasses and that's what I like to talk about or Instagram about or write about or what have you. I love that so much. I, I feel like I am a little bit like decor challenged. I don't know if that's a phrase, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not the best at home decor. So I'm excited. I've, I've loved learning from you in the past and following along with you. And I just love everything you do. And I love this new book that you have um, called Welcome Home. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about what this book is about and kind of why you wrote it? I sure will. Well, I'll tell you, my favorite people are people that feel like you, like decor challenged or whatever it is. That's how I feel about makeup. (laughs) I'll just say, when I go to a makeup store, I feel like an 11-year-old boy. I have no idea where to start. So I really feel uh, a kindred spirit with people who are like, I don't know where to start with decorating. 
even though I love it, I think there's this sense out there that um, decorating is supposed to be fun and easy and anyone can do it and you do it as a hobby to enjoy. But, you know, that doesn't mean that it's easy or that it's not stressful. I mean, we're spending real money and time and, you know, if it doesn't look right, it's frustrating. And so I totally get all that. And I like to say that, you know, decorating or making changes in our home is just um, making logical decisions in the right order. And so sometimes just knowing the order or looking just to the next step ahead of us can make it so much easier. And that's, that's what I'm here for to encourage women just to make small little changes in their home. So anyway, thank you for asking about my next book. It's called welcome home and the tagline's kind of a mouthful. It's a cozy minimalist guide to decorating and hosting all year round. So it's kind of split up into the four seasons and we talk about how to decorate for the four seasons really simply, but in a way that really honors the season. And then we also talk about hosting throughout the year and what it means to have a hostable home, but not one that's like dinner party ready, you know, at a moment's notice. And I don't think, I don't know anyone that hosts like that, just like real simple, lived in and loved on hosting like a normal, regular person. Yeah, that is so good. And I think that for me, the appeal to minimalism has just been that idea that, you know, our homes can still be, or even more so be a, a welcoming place without all the extra stuff. We can keep it simple, but still have it be welcoming. And the, the phrase cozy minimalism, I kind of want to backtrack for a second. I know you know, even the idea of talking about home decor and minimalism or talking about hosting and minimalism. I feel like I get a lot of questions about that because the idea of minimalism is to have less stuff. So I feel like there's a mental block there, right? Of just like decorating means I need more stuff <laughs> or host <laughs> hosting people would mean I, mean I need more stuff. So what is the difference between the idea of minimalist, bare bones, this idea that people have in their heads of like maybe zero decor in a home, completely minimalist versus cozy minimalism? Well, I love that question. I am very much drawn to um, the uh, purpose of minimalism. I, I love reading minimalist blogs. I'm very intrigued by that. And what I love about the word minimalist, I think, I know I have kind of twisted the definition uh, and stereotyped it, but really what minimal means is enough to meet a goal. And so it's very intentional. And we all get to decide what enough is based on our goals. So it's not about rules. It's not about counting your stuff. Um, but really, it's about uh, our stuff serving us and evaluating it, being in tune with it, and not having uh, more than we need to waste or not cluttering up our home or our life with excess. So I can really get on board with that as a person who loves pretty things, as a person who values a pretty home, as a person who wants a welcoming home with a cushy rug on the floor and throw pillows on my sofa, and I want drapes and art on my walls. But I still love the idea of a minimalist, a person who knows when to draw the line, who knows when to say, well, you know what, that's enough. That's enough to meet the style that I want without trying to be a diehard card carrying. I will only have something in my house, you know, if I sit on it 24 hours a day. Like, I don't really think that's what minimalists do. We're a minimalist is someone who's very intentional with what they bring in and what they take out of our home, out of their home. So I think it works so well uh, with decor and design. To me, minimalism is not a style. It's a tool. And the same way with coziness. So things that we use, the cozifiers in our home, they're also not a style. They're a tool. And so it takes um, both to make a welcoming home, a hospitable home, home that we like the look of and want to be in. It takes um, some editing out and some simplicity for the function to actually work. Because if our home is full of 10 million beautiful things, it's not going to function. At the same time, if our home is completely empty, it's not going to function. And so it's about that balance between the cozifiers and uh, the simplicity that we find our home and our style and a hostable place where we can welcome people in. That is so good. I, I just love the the term cozifiers. That's awesome. Um, but Isn't I just that good. I and I cannot take credit for that. So that's from Deborah Needleman in her home, um, the perf or her book, Perfectly Imperfect Home, which is so good. That's I just love it. I love the term. And 
um, it just makes, I feel like it makes it make more sense of just, okay, this is a tool. This idea of minimalism even is a tool. Like you said, it's, it's not one size fits all. It's just, I, I love how you say it's meant to help us meet a goal. And I think that if we kind of take that approach to it, then it doesn't feel like a set of rules that we have to follow. It doesn't feel like this extra stress we put on ourselves. Like I want to decorate my home, but I'm trying to have less stuff. So what am I supposed to do? I feel like it can become stressful to put that term minimalist on ourselves or on our home. So I just, I love your approach to it. <laughs> well, good. I like it too. I think it puts us in control instead of like minimalism as our boss. Like, no, no, I am the boss of the minimalism. I am the boss of the crucifiers. All right, friend, I wanted to take a minute or two to tell you about some things that I love and I've created for you. And the first one is Simple Morning Lists. So if you haven't heard me talk about Simple Morning Lists, it is basically a morning companion journal. It's a daily practice of letting go of what you shouldn't be holding on to, of getting grateful for the good things in your life, and reminding yourself of where you're headed, of who you want to be, of what you want to be about. So in a nutshell, what this journal includes is templates for you to make these five lists that I've been making for almost two years now, every morning. And you can really do this at any time of the day. I do it in the morning and I think it's a great way to start your day, but it can be beneficial at any part of the day. Whenever you can grab five minutes and jot some things down. The five lists I wanna let you in on, they are a surrender list, a gratitude list, a purpose statement, an affirmations list, and a focus list. The journal also includes weekly challenges and essays to go along with each of these lists scattered throughout. To me, fall and a new season, right around the corner, a new month even, it's the perfect time to really reinstate routines that might have fallen by the wayside or a routine that you've been wanting to build into your day, whether that's morning or evening. This can be done at any time of the day. It's been one of the most beneficial things for me to start my day this way. And I'm super grateful that over a thousand of other women are doing this with me every single morning. So if you haven't checked it out yet, head to simplemorninglist.com to find out more. That's simplemorninglist.com. All right, let's get back to today's episode. With your new book, it's all about making cozy minimalism work for each season or for hosting in each season, whether it's decorating or hosting. Um, what are some pillars for doing this in a way that makes the home a welcoming space but without, without overdoing with it? overdoing it because I know if I walk into like a home decor, decor store, especially in the fall, I, I love the fall. So I'm just like <laughs> overwhelmed and I want to buy all the things. So what are some, I guess you could say like pillars to creating a cozy minimalist home in every season, or if you want to focus on the fall um, without cluttering up your home? Sure. No, it's a perfect question. And I know before I became a cozy minimalist, I refer to myself as a stuff manager. So that was like, I'm cleaning my stuff. I'm organizing my stuff. I'm moving my <laughs> stuff. I'm losing my stuff. I'm buying my stuff. Uh, and so now I feel like, well, now I'm a cozy minimalist. Now I'm bringing things in, evaluating, moving things out, and what have you. And so as a cozy minimalist, when I think about decorating for fall, and when I think about welcoming fall in my home, I don't do what I used to do as a stuff manager, which was think, okay, it's going to be fall. I love fall or winter, spring, whatever the season. I really did want my home to represent each season. I think that's very normal. Like None of us want it to be 100 degrees outside on July 4th and walk in our house and it's dark and heavy and feels like it thinks it's Christmas. Like we want <laughs> our home to kind of feel in tune with creation. And I think that's a good, wonderful thing. Um, and so the problem was when I felt like it was time to maybe automize my home or make it feel a little more like fall, the only, uh, the only tool I had was I guess I need to go to Hobby Lobby or Target or what have you and go to the seasonal aisle and buy seasonal decor. That was all that I knew to do. And over time, I felt like 
it didn't quite mesh with my cozy minimalist ways. It was a little bit exhausting. And I felt like I was giving myself a part-time job, like one Saturday in September to change the house over to fall from top to bottom with stuff that I was storing away for 10 months out of the year. And that just didn't seem right. I felt like there could be an easier way, a more natural way. And so now as a cozy minimalist, really welcoming in the seasons, the pillars or whatever you want to call them is really welcoming the seasons through the five senses. And instead of 100% focusing on just visual decor, visual decor, things that say, you know, welcome fall and pumpkins and all those things that are beautiful. And I still love, but I don't rely on them as heavily because I am thinking through the five senses and layering my home with seasonal supplies that cater to all the senses, not just the visual, not just what I see. And so, you know, I'm buying the fall candles and I'm lighting them. So many people don't light their candles. It's crazy town. <laughs> yeah. uh, or I'm diffusing, you know, the scents in my home. I'm buying fall foods that feel like fall to my family. You know, every fall, maybe you do pumpkin pies or maybe you make homemade popcorn or whatever it is, a lot of families, if you think about it, you kind of have these perennial traditions uh, that feel seasonal, but to really embrace those on purpose and maybe you bake bread every fall. Do you have a bread knife? Do you have a pretty bed bread board to serve it on? Like I found that I might have a wreath for my door for every month of the year, but I didn't have something to serve soup. <laughs> you know, yeah. I didn't have those supplies for my kitchen that I really lean on during each season because I was so devoted just to the visual. And so as you work through the five senses in your home, you can really layer your home with a uh, a lot of consumables that you're going to use anyway, maybe you're going to burn the candles, maybe you're going to, um, you know, you're going to sleep on the flannel sheets. So things that you can feel, things that I create a fall playlist, I create a winter playlist. So I want to have speakers in my home so we can hear it. So just details like that, that once you layer those in, you find that you don't need as much cute fall visual decor than maybe you did, uh, you know, if you didn't think about the census. So now usually for fall, I grab some branches from outside. I'll go to my farmer's market and get, I call it a statement pumpkin, like the biggest, most glorious, weirdest pumpkin I can find and mm -hmm. set them on the table. Um, but it's more than just what you see. It's what you feel, what you smell, what you taste, what you hear. Yeah, I, I can totally see that. Just, I, I think about when I walk into like a restaurant, you know, like five years ago when we used to do that, <laughs> walk into restaurants <laughs> or, or a coffee shop or um, I don't know, something that just has a really great decor and feel to it. It's not because there is a ton of signs on the wall or there's just visual decor everywhere. It is just the whole package of the smells that you smell and the maybe the textures that are around you and the music. So that's so true. It, you get that feeling of welcoming or just the feeling of the season outside being inside your home whenever you are playing to all of your senses. So I, I think that's so helpful. And I think that when we think of decor, we don't think of all those things. So that's definitely a game changer for me when I think about and, and it's it feels it feels less stressful than yeah going to some kind of home decor store and feeling like okay I need to pick out the perfect things that are going to somehow go together and you know the styles change from season to season of course they do or from year to year um, so then your last year's fall decor doesn't look good enough for this year and all of that all of that is what what makes up the clutter like you said of just things that sit in your home for 10 months of the year. So I, I just love that concept. Yes. Well, and you're supporting your local farmer. You know, you get to pick out a new fresh pumpkin every year. And like you said, maybe, maybe last year you had burnt orange in your house. And this year you're going to get that greenish blue pumpkin or the white pumpkin. Like it's a fun way to get to kind of change things up. Low commitment color and you're supporting local people and you don't have to store it away, which is my favorite thing. Like my goal is at, at Christmas, I have about three bins of decor that I pack away, but the rest of the year I have zero decor, um, seasonal de 
decor that I have to pack away. I do pack up some, uh, like a little stack of different throws. So in the summer, I have like a thinner throw on my sofa and thinner sheets and different pillow covers. But those fold up really nicely just on a shelf in my linen closet um, for like fur throws and different fun things like that that I'll switch out in the colder months. Yeah. And that's so good because it's hard to find space if you have bins of decor for every season, for sure. So I would love to know, you kind of touched on a lot of things already, but I just want to kind of get a peek, I guess, audio, (laughs) an audio peek into (laughs) what your home, what your home looks like during the fall. So what's just personally for you, your favorite part of your home during this season or your favorite sense to bring in the home, whatever you want to share. Oh my goodness. Honestly, you're going to think I'm a crazy person because I love all decor. But my favorite part of fall is the music. I love, like to me, a banjo is fall and mm. I love folk music. I love banjo music. And I've already started listening to my fall playlist just to kind of tiptoe. I love a slow transition. I feel like that is what we see in nature. So nature changes very slowly. It doesn't wait till September 22nd and bam, all the leaves have changed. Like yeah. just kind of slowly. We, I, we have one tree, our cherry tree. The leaves are already yellow, but it's still 90 degrees outside. You know, so the, the corn is high. The garden still has vegetables in it, um, but things are slowly changing. And so a lot of times the very first thing I do is I change my playlist and I started listening to my fall playlist and it makes me so happy. There's something about music that just brings back memories and kind of sets you in a certain time. And if you create a playlist and play it every fall, like it just automatically feels that way. I know I still hear music like from summers when I was in high school. And when you hear those songs, it takes you back and you can recreate that with your own seasonal playlist, which is what I love. So right now I'm loving my seasonal playlist, but I also really look forward to getting that, finding that weird gnarly pumpkin. Like I just love the weird shape, really quirky <laughs> pumpkins. Yes. So I look forward to finding that and bringing it in. I always look forward to the first fire that we have in the fireplace and just some cozy togetherness, I think just feels uh, like, a, you know, the, the sponsored child for fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all the, the idea of the music, I, I don't make seasonal playlists, but now I'm going to, because I actually just came back to making playlists. I started trying to move my body more and I needed music for that. And I just started making playlists for the first time, probably since college. So it's been a while. I feel like I'm out of touch with my playlist making skills, but now I'm going to put it more into practice because oh, I can yay. totally agree with you with the the banjo sounds and folk music. I feel like that's just perfect for fall and can bring in a cozy feel without even having any extra stuff added to your home. Absolutely. And I give all of my playlists away for anyone that orders the book or pre-orders the book. We have like free bonus, you know how it is. You have free stuff. You want to give them to thank them. And so I have all my playlists that I link to, to kind of jump start. I mean, you can just listen to mine if you want, but I think it helps to kind of get you in the mood to jump start to create your own because it does like for all of us, banjos might feel like winter to you. I don't know. Right. And so it's it's just a fun way to kind of, I don't know, I, I agree, like to have a backdrop of music. I know uh, Mary Randolph Carter says music is the salt and pepper of an evening. I think music is the salt and pepper of a home, like to have music in the background of, while you're cooking dinner or, you know, doing Saturday chores, just it changes the mood. Yeah, it really does. And I think that with things like podcasts, which of course I have one and I love podcasts. I feel like a lot of times, you know, for me, I've gotten away from listening to music because I always have something I'm learning about in my ears, audiobook, podcasts, which I love. But as I've started to listen to music more, I, there's just a certain kind of like stress relief that comes from that, or it helps you relax and really unwind. So I, I totally I'm all for that. And I'm excited to get to steal some of your playlists as well. (laughs) Okay. So before we close our conversation, um, I always ask two questions at the end of every interview. And this first one, I I love to talk about intentional living. Um, My podcast, Minimalish, is more, even more about intentional living than it is about actually the stuff. I feel like the stuff of minimalism is, is only part of it. So 
What is one way that you choose intentionality in your everyday life? Ooh, that's really good. Um, I think one way is uh, just to pay attention to my personality. I have a high need for, like, I like to think and I like quiet and I have, I'm raising, my husband and I are raising three boys. Well, they're almost grown now, but <laughs> I try to find some kind of quiet every day, even if that just means like walking to the mailbox or something like that um, to create some quiet in my life. And of course, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to pray. And, but not even that, just like beyond that, just having a time where I'm not, you know, the, the TV's not on, or I'm not listening to my banjo music or a podcast, <laughs> or whatever. And like really being able to, if I'm outside, hear the birds sing, or if I'm inside, just listen to what's, what's going on. And just having a few moments of quiet, every day is, I don't know, it almost feels healing. It's so helpful. Yeah, I can agree with that for sure. I also need quiet or else I get extremely overwhelmed. So that is a very good practice. The last question that I have is what is something that you're loving right now? And it can be anything, something you're reading, listening to, or just anything. Well, my husband and I are watching, um, I think it's on Netflix. It's hosted by Bear Grylls. I want to say it's the eco challenge. I think it's called. It's like the the world's most difficult race. I don't know. It feels like um, the the amazing race on steroids or something. It's just fun to watch these teams. It's really heartfelt and something about watching people have to be really strenuous at the end of a hard day is relaxing to me. So that's what I'm enjoying right now. Yeah, that sounds really good. I actually haven't heard of that, so I'm gonna have to check it out because I used to really enjoy. The Amazing Race. I don't know. I'm. I think that's still on, but I don't have cable anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Netflix, I have that. So I'm gonna check that out. Well, thank you so much. Before we end this, where can anyone listening follow along with you or find your book? Oh, absolutely. Well, I hang out a lot on Instagram. I love it because it's so visual. I encourage women in their home almost every day there, and you can follow me there at the Nestor or online thenester.com, and that's where you can find links. If you do end up pre-ordering the book, if it sounds right for you and you want to grab those playlists, uh, you'll have free access to Welcome Home uh, prep school. That's where the playlist is and all kinds of fun things for you there. But you can just check it out and see if see if I'm the kind of person that maybe you would want to listen to for home advice. That's really all I talk about. Home, home, home. It's all I, <laughs> it's the only thing I kind of know. But uh, we have a lot of fun. It's a really sweet community of imperfectionists, cozy minimalists with lived in and loved on homes. That all sounds so great. Thank you so much for coming on. This is such a fun conversation and I am excited to implement a lot of it. And I know uh, a lot of women listening in feel the same way. Oh, thank you so much for having me. How fun we get to talk about home together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And as I have been doing through most of the summer now, I am ending each episode with a challenge. First of all, I am super honored that I got the opportunity to talk with Mike Quillen, and I 100% challenge you to go and check out her book wherever you typically buy books. Just go see what it's all about. It is available for pre-order right now and it is releasing on September 15th. So go check it out. Go check out the extra bonuses she was talking about. But also, I want to challenge you to use this super applicable episode and apply it to your own home. How can you use the five senses in your home during this season to create a cozy vibe that really feels like we are living with fall inside of our home, okay? Maybe not that extreme, but you know what I mean. What one sense, even if all the five senses feels overwhelming, what one sense do you feel like you could take and you could make it happen in your home right now? For me, something I never really thought about before is the whole hearing sense, the sense of hearing, the idea of music in the home. I actually have some built-in speakers in our new house, which is really great. I haven't gotten them up and running yet, but I am looking forward to making a cozy fall playlist and having that running through my home, especially since I'm working from home, teaching from home most of the day. So what one sense out of the five senses can you take and experiment with in creating this vibe of whatever fall feels like to you, creating this vibe? within your home. 
I would love to hear how you are using one of your five senses, all of the five senses, to decorate and use cozy minimalism to your advantage this season in your home. So if you do this challenge, I'd love to see you share that with me on Instagram. You can tag me, you can message it to me. I would love to see that. And along those same lines, if you enjoy Minimalish, if you have benefited from this episode in any way, if it's inspired you in any way, I would appreciate it so much if you'd share it with a friend. You can share it on Instagram. You can just text a friend, tell your friend over coffee later this week, whatever that looks like for you. Any way that you share the show, I'm super grateful for. That is all I have for today's episode. And I will talk to you right back here again on the next one. 